Hello, and welcome to Data Beats Opinion. I am Keith Perheck, and I'm here together with Alan Silvestri. He is the founder and director of strategy at Growth Gorilla. And in your own words, Growth Gorilla is a no BS content promotion and distribution agency for B2B SaaS companies. Um, thanks for joining us on the, on the podcast. Uh, hi, Keith. It's great to be here. And so, yeah, the no BS part, I actually took it out of the name. And I was listening to one oh, yeah? of your older kind of episodes where you were talking about and making fun of people that have the no BS part in the name. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of appropriate as well. But yeah, we don't have That's that hilarious. anymore now. <laughs> yeah, we. it's so funny how quickly that whole... Uh, like the views of those things changes like eight years ago, nine years ago, that was like, okay, this is something that's brand new. People are BSing us all over the place. Like putting that in, it's like, yes, this is a straight shooter. And then as soon yes, as something gets definitely. popular yeah. like that, everyone's like, wait a minute, we're all B no BS. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> it becomes kind of noise at that point. And then you have to find the next one to go on to. So yes, exactly. So that, yeah, that's the main reason we didn't want to. So we had that for a while. Uh, I think we were in the batch of people that were kind of like in the first ones to, mm -hmm. do, to do that but then yeah it becomes uh, trendy and so it yeah yeah we said just let's let's leave it <laughs> yeah it, before that it was you remember when everything was named sumo for some odd reason oh yeah <laughs> and then after that it was sherpa uh -huh. and like it was like uh content sherpa and all this stuff and i found out later that sherpa is actually a uh not racist term but it's a people right? It's okay. like in, in English, we always thought, oh, it's a guide. But it's like saying content Indians or content okay. <laughs> uh, Pol Polish, right? Like right. it's, it's yeah. a group yeah. of people. And I was like, oh, that doesn't yeah. work as well anymore. Yeah, that's one of those like SaaS trends, like having the name that finishes with like L-Y. L-Y, like, yep, yep. Like Calendly, basically. Yep. Everybody yep. started doing the same thing. So yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to talk uh, today a lot about that content promotion and that strategy. You know, I mean, most of us follow the build it and they will come from field of dreams strategy. And you've worked with a number of people like Podia and Uplead and a bunch of others. And just wanted to talk about how people generally go around content promotion, how they generally think about it, and then why they're all wrong. <laughs> and what you would recommend in those cases yeah so i wouldn't say that everybody is wrong uh, the main problem so actually the main thing that we notice with SaaS companies is that they're very good well for the most part they're very good at content a strategy content production right so they're really good at knowing the types of keyword that they need to rank for they are good at knowing the different types of pages that they need to publish. So like feature pages, the alternative uh, two kinds of pages. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that, yeah, basically once the content is published, they don't really know what to do with it for the most part. So some of them, uh, what they do is they just do like a little bit of social media, like a repurposing content into maybe like, uh, yeah, infographics or articles or podcasts or stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is what I would say is the more classic uh, content distribution, right? So uh, the way that we see content promotion is a proactive way of taking the content and putting it in front of the right people. And for us, what we do is more content promotion with the main focus of like ranking pages higher in Google for the target keywords, right? So it's content promotion slash link building essentially. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the way that we see it is link building done the right way. So for the main purpose of increasing rankings for your main target pages, that can be uh, the pages that can give you the best ROI in the shortest term possible, right? So this is the difference here between what we do and the standard link building just like randomly Right. building links to pages we have a very strategic approach that we use to identify these pages that are the best pages in terms of ROI for you and how do you kind of go about that like I think one of the problems a lot of places have is they have so much content and they're like I don't even know where to start like we have these things that we've spent a lot of time on but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good for that type of content promotion so what's your kind of yeah. like filtering process Mm -hmm. So first off, I like to talk about what I call the content graveyard. <laughs> so content graveyard is essentially where content just sits on the website and does nothing uh, for the company, right? So mm -hmm. like you mentioned before, 
uh, people think that they can just magically keep publishing and pumping out content in the hope they will magically rank. But sooner or later, you will get to the point where you hit a, like a threshold and you will mm -hmm. need more backlinks or better uh, like homepage as you... So yeah, like uh, maybe on page SEO optimization, so better keywords and better right. uh, like improvement uh, that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem, so what most people do is they try some link building. They get to a certain point where they think they have worked very hard on it and didn't get very nice results. So they just mm -hmm. like stop and decide to quit and just keep publishing content in the hope right. they will magically that rank. Something's going to magically yeah, yeah pop up there into the social zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah. So this is what we call the content graveyard. So what we found out is the best way to fix this problem is to, so it's to essentially make it in a way that your content production efforts are supported by a constant flow of backlinks uh, mm -hmm. to your uh, most important pages. So the way that we do it is we identify the pages that are like already ranking quite well, maybe page one, page two, page three of Google. And mm -hmm. we start building backlinks to those pages in a way that it makes sense, obviously. And we have a, a, like a whole process for that. But the main idea is to uh, try to push those pages higher in the rankings first, so that then once they rank higher, they start to also get backlinks naturally from people that are looking for information on the web. Mm -hmm. And so, so all of these efforts start to snowball uh, so Great. so in a way it looks natural to google because google sees that your page is ranking higher it starts getting more backlinks and then more pages start ranking higher the overall strength of the website in terms of links so the domain rating or domain authority uh, starts to increase and mm -hmm. all of these contributes to making uh, the site uh, rank better for all of the keywords right so yeah the whole idea is to get this constant flow of backlinks in a way that looks natural to the main and the most important pages, essentially. Is this something that you see, I think a lot of people, when they start thinking about, oh, getting pages to rank or SEO, they, they feel, I think that there's a hurdle because everyone's like, oh, it's going to take three to six to nine months before I even see any results. Is there, how do you kind of overcome that hurdle uh, when talking with clients or with any starting a new project where you're like coming in, it's like, is this going to take six months to, to see anything like? Yeah. So uh, first off, yes, for the most part, it does take a long time. For this reason, we only work with clients at like 12 months engagements, right? So we don't mm -hmm. do like three month test because essentially that doesn't work. Right. It's not, <laughs> so yeah. we only, yeah, we only want to work with the clients that know that this takes a long time. Uh, so typically what I say is if you are an established company with a high domain rating and a lot of content published already and some traffic and some momentum, then you might be able to even see results in two, three months, depending mm -hmm. on the types of links that we do and on the types of pages that we decide to focus on. Uh, so if the company is newer, that typically takes in between six and 12 months, right? To start seeing uh, some momentum. Yeah. So the, So these are... I will say the typical kind of ballpark numbers that I give to new clients that come to us. So when you say high domain rank, like what, so that people listening kind of under, have an understanding, like what is high domain rank in your mind? Um, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, they look at Ahrefs and everything and they're like, oh, I'm doing great. Then they look at their competitors like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so domain rating for stuff is a metrics by Ahrefs. And there's also domain authority, which is by Moz. So it's yep. two different software companies. Each one is slightly different. We focus on, on the Ahrefs metric. The main reason for this is because the Ahrefs metrics is built mainly on backlinks, uh, mm -hmm. while the Moz metrics has, uh, yeah. So I think they use a few other different kind of factors in there. So it's slightly uh, different, more comprehensive. But since we only work with backlinks and content promotion, we uh, I prefer to use the address metrics. Uh, <clears throat> so the way that you typically can identify uh, the domain rating and like your need of increasing domain rating is that you need to calculate what we call the link gap uh, between mm -hmm. you and your competitors. So you can do uh, some kind of analysis where you essentially determine how many links your competitors have more than you. And you can do this across multiple competitors at the same time. So once you know uh, how many total links their website has more than you, then you can also uh, calculate 
how many new backlinks they are building every month. And right. so all of this data is available in Href. Mm -hmm. And so essentially you then sum the two numbers. So the total link gap plus the new backlinks every single month. And then you can do, for example, let's say that you want to focus on a 12 month campaign. Then you know that you need to close the gap with the total number of links plus keeping also in mind the new links that they build every month. So you need to do better than that, essentially. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think one of the struggles that, and I think one of the benefits of working with someone like Growth, you and Growth Gorilla is that, you know, like you said, it is a time intensive thing. And as a founder or as someone who is running the business every day, there's always going to be fires. There's going to be things coming up. And the yeah. issue that you then run into is like, okay, this is something that needs to be on clockwork every single day, every single week, doing it over and over. And it's like, it's really difficult to find a two week stretch. Like I can focus mm -hmm. on something for two yeah. weeks, but then can I do it for six months? And I think mm -hmm. that's the value that you bring in a lot, not only just the knowledge, but also the single-minded focus into that yeah. so the way that i typically explain this to the client is they hire us for the expertise and for the hands that we put it into the work right yeah. uh, because something else that we noticed in in a lot of SaaS companies and this is also one of the main reasons why we decided to specialize in b2b SaaS, is because most of them have the content marketing department mm -hmm. which is mainly content strategy and content like publishing production but then they don't have the content promotion department, so yeah. essentially. So yeah, they're missing the last piece, which is very important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, even with our own stuff, and we have we've built internal processes. We call it the uh, infinite content plan, where essentially the idea is we build co cornerstone content, and then we build out um, satellite content around that, of mm -hmm. webinars and videos yeah. and audio and tweets and blah blah blah, all based around this singular idea. But you're exactly right. It's like, okay, we've launched this to our existing list and then all the mm -hmm. other content is kind of out there and then yeah. poof. And it's like <laughs> then nothing happens, right? So yeah, yeah. you're exactly right. That is the bottleneck. That is the challenge because some of us are really good at that and some of us are really not. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah, something else that's very, uh, that's very interesting. There's a study made by Ahrefs where they found out that 90% of all of the content published on the web doesn't get search search traffic basically and wow. the main reasons for that is i think three main reasons the first one is because it doesn't have backlinks so that's mm -hmm. number one S second one is because people choose keywords that don't have search traffic potential so keywords that they think are good but like nobody's searching for them and the third one is because they are not using the correct content type for the specific keywords that they want to rank for. And so how do content you mean like type, that? yeah, content type is essentially so if you have a, so for example, let's say that your keyword is called email templates, right? That you want to rank for. And then you look in the top 10 and all of the pages ranking there are essentially blog articles that are talking about how to create called email templates and some tips and tricks, some examples, right? Mm -hmm. And your page you're targeting called email templates, but your page is maybe a feature page or a product page, mm. right? So, so in that sense, the content type is different than what's already ranking in Google. And so for this reason, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to rank and compete with the other pages because so essentially that's something that's very useful to know for everybody is that Google essentially shows you what it wants to rank. So, mm -hmm. so as long as you look in the top 10, what you see there is what Google wants to rank. So right. the main idea is to try and do something that is like that, but better, or, better. or maybe with a different spin. Uh, so we've seen that content that's kind of controversial can rank uh, better as well. Mm -hmm. So even though it's not the same exact thing. So those are the two main things to keep in mind. Uh, so either do it better or doing it different than uh, the right. other people. So taking your email template, instead of having 10 templates, it's like why email templates should never rank or like why you should yeah. destroy all your email templates or 10 email templates you yes, should never exactly. send, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. So this is something that I think, especially in SaaS, that we run into a lot. And I think less so for like InfoBars and stuff, but very much in SaaS, where we have our content engine that is mainly blog based or article based or whatever that is those kind of listicles they're trying to hit keywords but we 
as business owners and people who are like, okay, we need to improve the business side. We want to focus on feature pages, like you're saying, like we mm -hmm. want those that email 10 email templates, we want, we don't want them to go to a blog article, we want them yeah. to go to our feature page. So yeah. how do you kind of, I mean, and that's a fool's errand, because that's never going to rank. So how do you kind of balance that when you're talking to a company that is no, 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 we don't want blogs, we want signups, right? Yeah. So the first thing to mention is we only work with companies that already have a content strategy where all of the different stages of the funnel are being covered, right? So they mm -hmm. will have blog articles that we have essentially all the different types of pages. Right. Uh, so in case we get a client that wants to work with us, but they only have product pages, we tell them, please go to these come guys. Back when they can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so come back when you're ready. Uh, that said, there are ways to build backlinks to product pages. It's it's probably like the 20% of what we do, uh, just because it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, the main way to do that is through guest posting, which is the uh, is probably the oldest kind of link building strategy out there. But the good thing about get uh, so yeah, about guest guest posting is that you are building backlinks through new content that you are publishing. Mm -hmm. So you have control over the link, the anchor text, and everything that you do inside that article, right? Uh, what we do instead is we uh, do link placements in existing content on the web. So in our case, we don't have full control over the link. Uh, we can't uh, typically ask the website to change the anchor text or change the text, right? Because it's, a, it's an existing article. So what we do is simply find the articles that are already like perfectly written and structured for the link that we need, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to build links to product, uh, to product pages, the best way is probably guest posting just because you can uh, be sneaky can control and add whole. the link in there. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you can control that. Uh, that said, we typically tell clients that they should be focusing on all three stages of the funnel. So mm -hmm. typically start from the middle, then move to the bottom. And then once you have more revenue coming into the door, you can uh, go back to the top of the funnel and get like more traffic uh, to attract more and newer uh, customers that way. Yeah. So when you are looking at optimizing for articles and for content, how do you then talk to clients as far as, okay, people are reading these blog articles and then what, right? So how do you then build a strategy around, okay, someone's coming into this article. This is what, do you give advice on, here's what you need in the article in order to bring them into being a trial or a customer? Um, <clears throat> so uh, no, technically. Uh, mm -hmm. So the other thing is we typically want to work with companies that have a process or something in place to be able to measure the ROI uh, from the content. So Got typically it. either having goals in, in Google Analytics that can measure how many uh, visitors that are going uh, from a blog to a sign up essentially mm -hmm. uh, so then what we simply do is we uh, so we start off by defining the strength of the website and we call it the keyword difficulty baseline mm -hmm. so so if you check uh, like hrefs or some of those tools they have a keyword difficulty kind of metric right uh, typically yeah. like easy hard and all that uh, what we do is we uh, so we have a process to be able to define the strength of your site at like any specific time. So we know what kinds of keywords your website can rank for uh, mm -hmm. with the current domain rating that it has now. Mm -hmm. So with that data, we can then segment all of the main keywords that your site is already ranking for and be able to focus on the ones that are the easiest ones first. So it's not like just picking and taking the hrefs uh, like buckets of difficulty right. because those are very generic. This is a, a specific. Uh, for your website. Mm -hmm. So it works better and it, it kind of allows us to focus on the easiest pages first. So we're able to rank those higher in the next like 60 to 90 days uh, typically. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, what we do is after we have defined this website strength, uh, we can do, uh, so we export all of the pages that are ranking, for example, from position four to position 20 or 30. So page mm -hmm. one, page three. Uh, then at this point, we get back in touch with the client and we ask uh, for their input on which pages they think are the most important for them from a business standpoint, uh, because this is like data points that we don't have typically. Right. So this is good to have the input from the client so they can tell us 
uh, yes, this page is converting very well. So we would like to focus on this one and all that. So at this point, they can uh, they can also send us the conversion data that uh, they have. So the Google mm -hmm. Analytics spreadsheet, CSV, and we can uh, match it uh, to the page that we have left in the list. Mm -hmm. So then at this point, what we do is we have a short list of uh, pages that are already ranking uh, well, page one, page three, that the clients uh, told us that they have a very good business potential and ROI kind of potential. Mm -hmm. What we do next is we take, uh, uh, so we take uh, each of those pages and we do uh, what we call a deep dive analysis. So we make sure that a page is matching the search intent for the keyword, uh, that is matching the content type that we were talking about earlier, and that also is matching or, uh, so it's matching or that it better uh, than the content quality. Mm -hmm. So for content quality, we use uh, Surfer SEO. Is a, a, a like an SEO uh, kind of audit tool that can give you a content score, a content quality score. So that then, uh, so if you need to, you can uh, maybe add more keywords in the title, in the body. You can add like internal links to improve the uh, the on-site uh, kind of optimization for the keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, because the whole idea is that the backlinks that we build are going to be uh, more effective if the uh, the like the technical and the on-page side of things is better, right? Right. So we and try then, to come in once everything else is taken care of. Essentially. Right. And do you lead people through that? Because I think that that's one thing that a lot, even if you have a content strategy, even if you know what's happening, there's always holes in this. And this is one of the things that I think is a struggle with content marketing and really any sort of digital marketing is that there's so many things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. People might have all their keywords dialed in, but they don't have their schemas installed or they don't have like, there's so many pieces. Like, do you help people walk through that? And like, cause there's always a lot of low hanging fruit. Yeah. So, so we get started, as I said, uh, trying to like do a discovery process. So we, so we really try hard to find companies that have like everything or as much as possible of that other stuff taken care of, because otherwise we would have to like do 10 different Start things. From right. The beginning. Yeah. 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 Uh, that said, uh, there are a few companies that are newer uh, and they don't know some of these things. So what we do is we can point them to other people that can help them. Or we have a quick check -click, uh, like checklist of the main thing that they need to have covered. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's part of the onboarding process. We have this checklist and the client survey. So they can tell us, uh, no, this thing, we don't have it or this is not uh, working at the moment. So then we can point them to someone else that can ha help. So basically fix it uh, before they come in to work with us. Yeah. If you, So what is some of the best advice you would give for someone in both cases where they want to come work with someone with you, um, but they're not sure if they're ready? Like, what are some of the things that you would say, look, get these five things in, in line, mm -hmm. and this is going to build that foundation so that we can do our job the best? What would those be? Yeah. So first off, I would say having the technical, uh, like the technical aspect cover. So the site is fast, is loading fast. Uh, the site uh, looks good as well. So the design aspect is very important, especially so if you're trying to get people to link to your content, the content really needs uh, to look good mm -hmm. because unfortunately people do judge a book by its cover. <laughs> so yeah, that's very important. Having a, a super fast, uh, snappy site that looks good and modern, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is to have a content strategy in place that, as I was saying before, covers uh, like all three stages of the funnel. So you should have your top of the funnel content, the middle, like reviews, alternative, and all of the how-to kind of guides, mm -hmm. plus the feature pages and all of the bottom of the funnel pages. Once you so have... Real quick, yeah. when you're talking about top of funnel, you're talking about essentially SEO content that is something that hits those 9 a.m., those uh, 2 a.m. search queries, right? Like something like, I need an email template or I need, uh, what's the best thing to use for X? Those types of mm -hmm. contents, yeah? Uh, so those, I would say it's middle, it's more, more middle, middle of the funnel okay. because people are in the consideration stage. So they are like looking and like searching for like solutions, right? Mm -hmm. So the top of the funnel is so yeah, I would say it's the type of content that is more generic and more broad in a way, but it has to do with your niche, with your kind of industry and the problem that your software uh, solves, mm -hmm. right? So all of those topics that are 
are very uh, useful to attract uh, new people that maybe still don't know that they have this problem, uh, but then by reading the content that they are like, ah, oh, okay, so maybe I need this. And then they dive deeper into the middle of the funnel content. So discovery, they start to look for alternatives. And then the final part is the bottom of the funnel where they are essentially either uh, know like your name, so they are mm -hmm. just ready to buy, or they are looking for alternatives and competitors and stuff like that. Awesome. And then, sorry, I kind of interrupted when we were talking about the content. Yeah. And then, so we talked about the technical side. We talked about, okay, oh, yeah. they have the full funnel, top, middle, bottom of content. And then what else would they need before they, they really are able to make this work with you? Yeah. So uh, the last thing is those three things that we mentioned before. So once you have the content, you should make sure that the content is matching the search intent, mm -hmm. the content type, and the quality as well for the keywords that you want to rank for. Uh, once you have like all of this ready, then you're ready to uh, build backlinks and promote the content because the uh, structure is essentially solid. Right, and that's a guide that you also provide and help people through when they start working for you. It's like, we kind of went yeah. over it now, but it's also like, okay, when you start working together, here's the checklist of the 20 things. Like, look at yeah, these, so make we, sure you're... So we do this with the sites that are like the, like the more new, like, so yeah, new companies that are just like starting out, maybe they have like, five, 10 articles on the blog. So mm -hmm. it's still a good time now to let them know about these things so they can work on it. Because uh, otherwise, if the company is already a little bit established, maybe they already have like 30, 40 pages on the site, then it would take too much time for them to fix everything right. and then come to us. So in the case, I just tell them, uh, come back to us in like next quarter, maybe once you fixed all of these things. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So what some of the, once someone gets that together, what would be some of the first things that you would really recommend looking at or doing in that outreach? Is it just like, okay, once all your ducks are in a row is just continual outreach to the right people and finding the right content to get those backlinks to, is that really mm -hmm. the, the magic that you bring there? Uh, so the magic I would say is more into the strategy. Mm -hmm. So the three main problems that most SaaS companies have with content promotion and links is number one, they don't know uh, which pages to promote and in which order. And this is the uh, like the solution is what we discussed now. So yeah. uh, being able to identify the pages that have the most potential from an ROI standpoint. Uh, the second problem is knowing the types of links that they need to be able to rank these pages higher. And the last problem is having a system and a process to do, to do basically the, the work. Yeah. 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 So number two, uh, so knowing the types of links is something that is quite of a technical uh, thing to do, mm -hmm. uh, but this is where like an agency like us uh, can come into place and be very useful. So what we do is we have a process where we analyze all of the uh, competitor backlinks and we can identify the, the, like the main metrics that these backlinks needs, uh, uh, need to have for you to be mm -hmm. effective. So the domain rating that the backlinks need to have, the type of traffic, the URL rating, so the strength of the page and not only of the domain. And then things like topical relevance. So knowing the types of anchor text that the backlinks need to have, the distribution of the anchor text and the, uh, the distribution between uh, links that are pointing to your homepage and links that are pointing to the uh, like internal pages like blogs and stuff like that. So all of these things, uh, you put them together. Uh, we have a report for this that then we use and that's gonna be determining the whole kind of outreach that we do. Right. The, the, to me, this is the most fascinating change <laughs> in marketing over the last 10 years, because you just explained things that, I mean, I, I know how backlinks work, but now you're talking mm -hmm. about like anchor position and like what is the the, the relevance score and the... Um, and just how often you're doing anchors versus regular, like, like all this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's so in depth and it's so outside. Like if you're not an expert in this, there's no way that you're going yeah. to be able to understand <laughs> and manage this because marketing has honestly gotten like when, when I started doing digital marketing, it was like you have one person doing the landing page design and the SEO and probably writing a bunch of the content. And now it's gotten so expert based. Yeah. Uh -huh. You have to have an expert to get into any points of these because you can't do the general anymore. You can't do general yeah. optimization. Because the main problem is the thing that 
like media has become so democratized now that anybody can just publish anything they want. So there's yep. so much stuff like published around that I don't know like how many millions of pages are published every day. And so to be able to really compete and stand out, you really need to dive yeah. deeper basically into all of these things. And it, it is, it's standing above the crowd. So do you know Stack Overflow on the web? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there are a number of different Stack Overflow. It's not even clones. They just scrape the information off of Stack Overflow and they rank higher than Stack Overflow now because they've been able to game that system and because they understand at a deeper level what Google is looking for and they're able to produce that. And it's mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like... Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so everybody says that like SEO is dead, uh, but actually it's just that Google has changed and so SEO is changed with Google as well. So yeah, uh, yeah that's the thing. You, need, like, you really need to be constantly on top of things and things change super fast. So this is yeah another reason why having somebody that's dedicated to only this is a good kind of right. idea. <laughs> and it stops the the things of like because you're in the know, you understand all this stuff. So it stops the oh my page rank just dropped on the fifteenth. Why, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you, we don't know because it's yeah. this black box of Google. But as someone who's invested and in working every day, you're like, okay, I've seen this against. The... So when I was back doing some of this stuff, I was able to say, oh, look, all of our clients in healthcare were able to saw this drop. So obviously Google put out something that hit health systems as opposed to yeah. other ones and like, and be able to see that at a, at a macro level, which mm -hmm. as an individual, you like, like me doing a SaaS company, I can't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so the other thing is like, you really need to be uh, kind of like a specialist, but also be able to know when your specialization is not enough. So mm -hmm. we uh, just uh, like recently did a test with this client and we were building links to this page of them, but the page wasn't ranking higher than pay, like position four, three mm -hmm. or something like that. And number one was a competitor with a page that has zero backlinks. And like the domain rating was even lower than the client, right? Oh. So they're like, okay, what's happening? What the what's heck? going on? <laughs> yeah. So we found out that the only reason why the client wasn't ranking higher is because they didn't have one of the keyword variation inside the title. So we, so we just Whoa. did a test. We simply added the keyword in the title. And basically once the on-page optimization was done properly with this kind of extra keyword, like just up to number one so, so yeah it's like finally the backlinks were able to unleash their power and the page right. like shoot up to number one and the competitor basically disappeared after a while how, how do you even go about figuring that out though was it just testing or like that's it's mind-blowing uh, like <laughs> so basically we do like every month we kind of reassess and make sure that the roadmap so the strategy they that we have with all the pages is still like working, right? Mm -hmm. So we saw that that page wasn't ranking higher. And it, so there was basically a delay compared to the expectations there. So we run uh, the on-page uh, kind of audit tool again, Surfer SEO, and we saw that the, so basically the only difference between them and the competitors was from the on-page side of things, mm -hmm. uh, the lack of that one uh, kind that of- one keyword. Uh, yeah, related keyword in the title. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So then I guess what would, like someone who wants to get started with this, uh, we talked about, okay, what should you have at the beginning? Uh, what should you have like to get all your ducks in a row before you work with, uh, with you or, some, um, or with Growth Grill? What advice would you give for people who are looking to get started with this who maybe aren't ready for that? Like what's the number one piece of advice you would give for someone who's like, my ranking just sucks. We're not getting the traffic we want. We're having to pay for ads to to supplement that. I want to get out of the ad game. What should they do? Like, what's your yeah. number one piece of advice? So the first thing that most SaaS companies can do themselves straight away is try to increase their own domain rating, right? So the best way and the easiest way typically to do that is to try and get placements in all of those listicles or list articles that are mentioning like best 10 tools for customer service, for example, right? So find out the main uh, kind of industries that your software covers. 
so you should know them already. So if you found like yeah, product market fit. So then it's simply a matter of finding all of these articles. So you can do searches for like best, uh, best tools for this, best tools for that. And then you can get like all of them into a list, make a note of, for example, what this article is missing or what this article is covering the specific angle maybe. So you can mm -hmm. use that to pitch uh, the inclusion of your tool in that specific list. So maybe the list is best tools for busy people. So find a way to say why your tool is good for busy people so that they will get you placed inside that list. So all of these list articles are very good because you would get a link to the homepage and that typically increases the domain rating, the strength of the whole site. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done this for a while and you capture like all of the opportunities that you could, uh, then uh, the the domain rating will be higher. So then all of the other content that uh, you have should start ranking higher. So maybe it will get to page two, page three, something like that, right? So at this point, you can start doing the process that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. So identify which ones of these pages uh, that are already ranking well without backlinks have the most potential for revenue for you. And then you can focus on those first push them higher in the rankings and then move on to the other ones as well. Uh, the important thing to mention for people that, uh, so yeah, that are just like starting out with this is to find uh, like an outreach process or template or method that works for you specifically mm -hmm. for your situation. Because the thing with link building and content promotion is there's a ton of different strategies and tactics and all of that stuff out there, like broken link building, guest posting. So so none of this will definitely work 100% for you. So it's just a matter of finding what works for you, right? So you right. can try a couple of them and see which one uh, you think works best, basically. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, I actually have one thing. I, I got to show this because this is uh, yeah. probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So this is your website. And <laughs> <laughs> this is the most amazing vaporware 80s aesthetic that I've ever seen. And I, I just got to ask, why like why it's so yeah. cool I, I love it i love it but so for self, i mean I, you've got yeah. the, the posters behind you and everything like mm -hmm. how did this come about so yeah, i've always been uh, very much into the 80s i was born in 1986 so it's not like i'm an 80s kid but yeah i got like the uh, so yeah the leftovers from that i would say <laughs> then i'm uh, back to the future fanatic that's like my main obsession i have a whole sleeve tattoo that's just back to the future stuff oh, basically awesome. uh the wall in front of me is all back to the future stuff i do have like here for example the little oh nice love it thing. love it <laughs> uh so yeah then i was able to buy a delorean as well two years ago that's my main card that i use every day i go grocery shopping with it oh. so you could tell i'm really into that mood and yeah i mean so it was just like a natural progression to to have the agency and the business reflect, reflect uh, that. like, yeah, the way I am, basically. That's awesome. So have you put a flux capacitor in your DeLorean? <laughs> Not yet, because <laughs> I'm still spending a lot of money to fix uh, the fix actual it. car. First. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, at this point, it's what, a 40-year-old car, I think? Yeah, 41 yeah. years old. 41. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> awesome. Alan, thank you so much. Anything? Uh, so where can people find you online? So we're going to link to Growth Gorilla. Where else should people find you online? Uh, yeah, the main uh, place is the website, so mygrowthgorilla.com, and then my Twitter kind of account is Alan G Gorilla. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Nice. Those are the main places. Awesome, Alan. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you, Keith. It's been All great. Right. Take care.